is if delta H is negative and delta S is positive, okay? They can both be positive, they can both be negative. Those are two scenarios. One could be positive, one could be negative, and they could switch. So there's really only four scenarios. Okay, if this happens, okay, let's think about our equation again. Here's our equation. Delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. <coughs> so if delta G is delta H and delta H is negative, minus, minus T temperature, and delta S is positive, minus a positive, okay, you can uh, make up some numbers to prove this to yourself, but if you subtract a positive value from a negative number, it will always be negative, okay? So like negative 10 minus positive 5, negative 15, negative 100 minus negative minus positive 600, negative 700, okay? It's always going to be uh, negative. Delta G is negative at all temps. Because the temperature, because we're doing it in Kelvin, or using your, we're going to do the calculation in Kelvin, that will never change the sign. Okay. So if it's negative at all temps, what does that mean? Is it spontaneous or non spontaneous? It's negative. Spontaneous, yep. So delta G is spontaneous at, delta G is spontaneous. The reaction is spontaneous at all temperatures. And if you think about it, both of these were the two uh, scenarios where the reaction tend to be spontaneous. If we're exothermic, that means we're going downhill in terms of potential energy, tend to be spontaneous. If our delta S is positive, that means we're becoming more disordered, which is most likely to happen. So both of those happening cause the reaction to be spontaneous at all temperatures. On the other side of the spectrum, you could have a reaction or physical process where delta H was positive and delta S is negative. What will that do for our calculation? Now we got delta G equals a positive number and we're going to subtract a negative number, which will turn it into a positive. So we're ta taking a neg positive number, subtracting a negative number, which turns a positive. So guess what? You're going to get a positive number, no matter what you do. You can put any numbers in here, have at it, test it out. This is going to happen. Delta G is positive at all temps. So what does a positive delta G mean? Non-spontaneous. And so this reaction or chemical process or physical process is non-spontaneous at all temperatures. Then again, if you think about this conceptually, the two uh, variables, enthalpy and entropy, this should make sense. So if change in enthalpy, delta H is positive, what do we call that type of reaction? Endothermic. Endothermic. So of course that means you have to put in energy for that to uh, go. Or they, you, know, you don't have, I mean, it's going uphill in potential energy. So the surroundings is transferring energy to this uh, system, the reaction. Delta S is negative, what's that mean? 
Delta S is negative. What's that mean? It's becoming ordered. It's becoming less disordered. We're becoming ordered. And we know that takes energy to do that. Nature doesn't tend to order things. It tends to disorder them. And so both of those are the uh, uh, um, cases where it tend to be non-spontaneous. And when they're combined, they're going to be spontane non-spontaneous at all temperatures. OK, so those are the two ones that uh, are sort of invariant of temperature. Uh, the next two are going to be temperature dependent. There will be a temperature at which they become spontaneous or non-spontaneous. The first of those that we could talk about is, well, let's say they're both positive. So delta H is Z, well, positive. So it's endothermic, not good for spontaneity. And delta S is also positive. So that's becoming more disordered. So that's good for spontaneity. Endothermic's bad for spontaneity. Increasing entropy is good. So which one's out? Well, it's going to be temperature dependent. So let's think about this. Delta G equals a positive minus T a negative. Positive, I mean. Huh. So it really depends which is going to be bigger. All right. And so there's going to be two scenarios at a low temperature and high temperature. So let's just play around with some numbers. Mm. Mm. All right, so let's say at low temperatures. Let's say T equals 0 0.5 Kelvin. So that's low, that's cold. All right, Get, grab, your, grab your jackets. Okay, let's just make up some numbers. All right, so let's say our delta H is I don't know, 10 kilojoules. And our delta S is 2 kilojoules per Kelvin. All right, just making up numbers. So what's going to happen at the low temperature? Delta G is going to equal 10 minus 0 0.5 Kelvin times 2 kilojoules per Kelvin. That equals 1, 10 minus 1 is 9 kilojoules. That's positive, right? So what's that mean? Non-spontaneous. Now let's think about at high temperatures. Let's say temp equals, I don't know, 20 Kelvin. That's still pretty cool. Grab your jacket and a scarf and prepare to die. That's, it's really cool. But anyways, it's, it's going to work out for this example. Again, I'm just making up numbers. So we're going to keep our delta H and delta S the same. So delta G is going to equal 10 kilojoules minus 0 0.5 times. Oh, wait, no. Let's screw this up. Let's make it a little bit warmer. 40 Kelvin. I've got to make it work so I can make a point at the end. So <laughs> if it doesn't make the point that I want to make it, it's not going to be a good example. All right. So times 40. Uh, no, wait. Oh, all right. No, 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 no. No, that was okay. Let's go back to 20. Start over. This is going to look good in the video. It's going to look like I know what I'm doing. Okay, so 20 Kelvin. Um, so we got 20 Kelvin times 2 kilojoules per Kelvin. 
So 10 minus 20 times 2, that's 40. 10 minus 40 is negative 30 kilojoules. What's that mean? If delta G is negative. Spontaneous. So at high temperatures, this reaction would be spontaneous. Yes, sir. So, uh, standard, what do you call it? Standard, state, standard states. 25 degrees Celsius, one molar concentrations, one atmosphere partial pressures. So, if we, uh, for our standard state, if it was at 0 0.5 degrees Kelvin, mm -hmm. then it would be not spontaneous. And it's at yep. degrees now, it would be spontaneous. Yep. So and the, the, real, the real point I'm making here, not with the actual numbers, uh, is that for this system where the enthalpy is positive and the delta S is positive, there's going to be a temperature at which this reaction or physical process becomes spontaneous. All right? And for this one, it's going to be at low temperatures, it's non-spontaneous. At higher temperatures, it is spontaneous. All right? A good example of that is... Something really simple, water boiling. Or water melting. It could be either one. But I already said water boiling. I'm going with it. All right. At what temperature does water boil? 100 degrees Celsius, 373 Kelvin. Below that temperature, it's not spontaneous. Above that temperature, it's spontaneous. Okay, And that is a good example because, well, of course that's a good example. I came up with it. Uh, no, but the, it's exactly uh, uh, the scenario here. It's boiling, so what do you have to do to, to boil water? You've got to put it on your stove or on the hot plate in the lab, right? So you have to put energy into it. It's an endothermic process. But the water is going from the liquid phase to the gas phase. What's happening to the entropy? It's increasing. Delta S is positive. Well, if you put, how is it endothermic if you put, I mean, uh, you know, energy into it? To you have to put, so all endothermic means is that the, uh, the energy is transferring from the system, surroundings to the system. That's what you do when you boil water at atmospheric pressure, 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. All right, so there's going to be one more possibility. Both uh, one neg uh, delta H is negative, delta S is positive. Delta H is positive, delta, H, delta S is negative. They're both positive and, of course, both negative. Okay, so the last one is if delta H is negative. Good for spontaneity coming downhill in terms of potential energy. And delta S is also negative, meaning becoming less disordered, more ordered. Not good for spontaneity. All right, so this is going to be another one where it's temperature dependent. All right, so again, we're going to have at low temperatures. <clears throat> so let's say T equals 1 Kelvin. All right, we're cooking now, 1 Kelvin. All right, we got to make up some delta H's. So let's say delta H is negative 20 kilojoules. And delta S is negative 5 kilojoules per Kelvin. Okay, so at low temperatures, delta G equals a negative 20, delta H kilojoules, minus T delta S, so temperature 1 Kelvin, a negative 5 kilojoules per Kelvin. That equals negative 20 minus a negative 5, so it would be plus 5, so negative 15 kilojoules. So what's that mean? Spontaneous. at the low temp.
right, so let's see what happens at a higher temp. Let's say temperature equals, so we gotta be higher than one Kelvin. Let's say 100 Kelvin, whew, sizzling. No, still really, really cold, but it's higher for this example. I wouldn't want to go into that uh, place, whatever. So it's minus negative 173 Celsius. So Kelvin minus. For, from Celsius to Kelvin, you add 273, you subtract it going from Kelvin. So negative 173 Celsius. As being American, I have no idea how cold that is, but I know it's cold. <laughs> it's funny when I like try to like pretend I know Celsius and like say what temperature it is outside. It's always like really, it's like, I don't know, 40 degrees Celsius outside. It's like 120 Fahrenheit-ish, I don't know. I try. So, so if room temp I always think, I, I mean, I can get a better guess at that. So, you know, it's 25 degrees Celsius is about 72 Fahrenheit. So it's like 80 degrees, maybe like 27, 28 outside. All right, see? I can fake it. Fake it till you make it. Story of my life. Okay, so at higher temperature, what's going to be our delta G? I bet you're going to, you bet you could predict this. So it's still negative 20 kilojoules minus, now we're at 100 Kelvin, T times delta S, so 100 Kelvin times a negative 5 kilojoules per Kelvin. So that's negative 20 minus a negative 500, so plus 500, so what's that, plus 480 kilojoules? So what's that mean? Non-spontaneous. And we can find the temperature at which it became. We can. It's can good. We also do that for the experiment? Uh, yeah, for this, yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll do an example. I'm glad you. I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Non-spontaneous at high temperatures. Okay, again, just making up numbers to prove the, the math behind this. And so for a system where the enthalpy is negative, exothermic, and it, uh, entropy is negative, meaning becoming more disordered, uh, again, it's temperature dependent, but this time the process would be spontaneous at a lower temperature and non-spontaneous at a higher temperature. Basically, the enthalpy has to make up for the decreasing entropy. The system's becoming more ordered, so the enthalpy has to disorder the surroundings enough to make delta S positive so we can follow the second law of thermodynamics. And of course, we know that the change in entropy is gonna make a bigger difference at a lower temperature. We saw that previously. All right, so what's an example of that? Another uh, um, simple example would be uh, water freezing. And I know I definitely know how to spell freezing, and that's not it. So, what's water freezing? What's the uh, physical process? What's going on? Liquid to solid. So we're becoming more order. We're going from liquid water molecules randomly around uh, the sample to now they're in fixed positions in a uh, crystal. And so our entropy is definitely decreasing, but it's also exothermic. And so below, what temperature does water freeze at? Zero. zero degrees Celsius. So below zero degrees Celsius, 273 Kelvin, it's spontaneous. Above zero degrees Celsius, 273 uh, Kelvin, it's non-spontaneous. <laughs> 